and we can pick up our phone and we can tap the icon and we will get the random cat generator <laughs> installed on our iPhone as an application. This is amazing. You can click show me another cat. It works. It's a real app. This does everything that the version on the web would do. Hey, it's Matt with Replit. We're back for part two of our series on building mobile apps using Replit and Expo. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the app we built yesterday and install it on your iPhone. Very straightforward. Um, now, there are a lot more steps in this video. It might be a bit longer, uh, but I've documented everything in the README. Um, I've uh, actually walked through this entire process myself. I created an App Store developer account specifically for this video. Um, so uh, we will be doing exactly the same thing. This video is specific to iOS apps. So if you wanna build an Android app, actually all of the steps on the Replit and Expo side are the same. You'll just have to insert basically Google Play Store steps where we do Apple stuff, um, maybe coming in the future. Uh, prerequisites for this video. First, you have to have completed the steps in the first video. There's a link down uh, wherever you see this video to do that. Very quick, very straightforward. Um, second, you'll need an Apple developer account. This is kind of a bummer. Look, I don't like to tell people bad news, uh, but this is a little hard to do. First, you have to go to Apple's developer portal, which you can find at developer.apple.com slash account. Um, from there, you'll need to pay Apple more money Tim Cook and shareholders rejoice, right? Apple, <laughs> Apple gets richer. So you'll need to give Apple about 99 bucks a year in order to publish apps. Yes, even apps that just go on your phone. Um, once that's done, you have to wait about 16 to 24 hours. So um, just wanna get that out of the way up front. Uh, in my case, it took 16 hours for this to come in. Apple says it could take up to 48 hours for them to approve your profile. Once that's done, you'll have access on the iCloud side and you'll be able to publish apps. The good news is you only have to do this once for your account and then you'll be able to just like build uh, cool stuff. Um, so the process we're gonna go through today um, is basically taking the app we built, uh, building it on the Expo side and then pushing a preview to our device. So there's some setup that has to happen um, on the Apple side, on the iCloud side. There's some setup that has to happen on our iPhone. Um, but once that's done, we're gonna have a build of this app that we can use. Uh, we're not gonna walk through the process of actually publishing this to the App Store, but we're gonna do everything that you need to do um, in order to get that done. And then you can publish your app if you choose. The cool thing is that what we're gonna do enables you to build basically any tool that you want to have as a native iOS app. So if you wanna build an automation, if you wanna build a prototype, this is an amazing start. This is gonna get you all the way there. And we're gonna get it done um, as quick as possible, as simply as possible. I have all these instructions also outlined in the readme. The first thing I wanna call out, and then we're gonna jump into building stuff, I promise. If you remixed the Expo template that we have, um, like right when it came out, we've made some updates. So the readme is updated. And then the other thing that's updated is this uh, config file down here, dot replit. So if you don't see that, you might have to um, click the three dots and click show hidden files. Um, and if you, you know, remix this and um, this config file is out of date, what you can just literally do is copy that go to your Expo app that you made and paste it in. If you remix this, like right when you're watching this video, if you just completed the first version, don't worry about it. This is all up to date. Um, this just makes sure that uh, we have the Expo workflows that are just gonna simplify some commands. Um, so let's get into it. We have our app running here. We have a very cute picture of a cat. I actually don't even wanna click show me another cat because of how cute this is. Um, and what we're gonna do, is we're gonna initialize EAS, which is like the Expo application service. It's gonna like act as the interface between um, our build and Expo, uh, as well as like the, uh, the Apple App Store. So I'm actually gonna stop this app from running. That's gonna like make this a little easier for me to see what's going on. And then we're gonna run our first EAS command. Now in that workflow file that we just copied out, you can see uh, the workflow is defined. These um, commands are just EAS commands. And so in the readme, which has also been up updated, um, if you really wanna see exactly what's going on, you can look and say, oh, like, well, we can select EAS in it, right? Or we can just run this command. This is a bit more of a technical tutorial. You don't actually have to run these commands, but I think it's worth putting in there if you wanna learn more about um, Expo and how that works. So I'm gonna click EAS in it, we're gonna run that. And now I'm gonna get a prompt to log in. So I'm gonna log into my uh, Expo personal account. You're gonna need a username and password. This is the official Expo CLI and these are all stored securely. So don't worry about that. 
Um, once we log in, uh, we're going to create a project, right? I don't have a project that exists. Maybe you do. Maybe you created that in an earlier step. This is actually defined in the app.json. So if you want to change the name or the slug, that's where we're defining these projects. Um, that's how you can change those things. I'm going to say yes. So EAS is going to create my project. Um, we're going to get an ID. You can actually see this file being updated in real time with some of these project characteristics. And this is going to authenticate um, this application with my Expo account. So we're all squared away there. Um, if you did this in the first step, you might like you run this command, it says you're logged in, good to go, amazing. Uh, this is completed running when the run button comes back up, by the way. Now, we're gonna run EAS update. Again, this is an initialization step. Um, this helps like configure our project and link all that Apple goodness, all the Apple, <laughs> Apple developer stuff um, to our project. So you might see uh, some install commands, some other stuff going on. Uh, a lot of configuration is happening here. Again, we, we try to make this as simple as possible with the drop down menu and the simple click of a button. Um, you'll know this is successful if you see um, this uh, Metro bundler start and um, there's an exporting step that's gonna pop up. This might take one or two minutes, uh, but once that's done, um, we'll have like that update step configured. And again, this is really just initialization stuff. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, it's worth mentioning, if you haven't seen the first video, uh, the amazing things, you can actually do all of this from your phone. So if I open up my first Expo app on my iOS device, um, if I really want to, I can see the, uh, if I go to like, uh, the console, you can actually see all of the exact same output, which is pretty amazing. And you could literally tap through and run these same commands in real time. Uh, so you can see there we're exporting the bundles. We uploaded two app bundles. I don't really even know what a bundle is, um, but we're, <laughs> we're getting it done for, uh, for our app here. Um, so now we can see that we have a branch, um, some other details. Uh, it's actually storing our git commits from our replit project. And that includes our, um, our last assistant prompt. Uh, so this step is complete. We have that all good to go. And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna click EAS publish preview iOS. So again, this is executing the command npx eas build platform iOS profile preview. If you wanna do this for Android, you probably click the publish preview Android. Um, so we're gonna get uh, some output here, iOS bundle identifier. Um, if you've ever seen applications on the App Store, they all have an identifier. Usually it's like uh, the website and then the name of the app. So I'll do like gg.palmer. Yes, I own palmer.gg. Uh, dot um, <laughs> my first expo app. And really this can be whatever you want it to. It's just kind of a format formality. Um, iOS only uses standard accept encryption. I don't know what that means. I could probably click that link and learn more if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna hit yes. Uh, as we're doing this stuff, pay attention to security. You should research if you're putting any sensitive information in your application. That's my disclaimer. Do you want to log into your Apple account? Yes, we do. What's your Apple ID? Um, that's my Apple ID, boom. Uh, now we need to do a password. Again, Expo is pretty secure with this stuff. Apple has pretty strict two-factor authentication. Uh, you can be confident that um, you're not gonna do anything too bad. You'll get an Apple pop-up if you're on iOS um, and we're gonna validate our account. Hit enter. We're logged in and verified. You can see there I have two teams. I'm gonna use my individual uh, team because I want this to be as close to, po uh, to possible as to what you're doing. So we'll go with my individual account. You should see, again, your Apple developer account that you created following the steps outlined um, in the documentation. Again, I'm gonna select my individual bundle um, identifier. And you can kind of see if, if we're thinking logically what's going through here, uh, we're generating some device distribution certificates. I'm gonna hit yes. I don't have any registered devices. Would you like to register them? I also noticed this pop-up still up. We'll close that out. Yes. Um, how would you like to register your device? We're gonna say website. Amazing. So now we get this QR code. And this is where we start doing stuff on our phone. Um, what we're gonna have to do here is install what's called a development profile. Now, a development profile uh, kind of allows us to install these preview apps um, and it grants some specific permissions on our phone. 
So we kind of have to be aware of what we're doing. We don't just want to install things like willy nilly, right? Um, but if you want to read more about this, there's a ton of documentation on Expo, right? Like I can learn about this. Um, I can read exactly what's going on and they actually give us instructions. So what we're going to do here is download the profile, go to settings. Um, it's going to pop up right in our settings, kind of like right in our face. It's hard to miss it um, and click install. So I'm going to click download profile, continue, allow, profile downloaded, close. And then we're going to go to our settings. I'm in display and brightness, but right at the top of settings, profile downloaded. I'm going to tap that, register for development, install. We're going to enter a passcode. I'm not going to show you what my iPhone password is. And then we're going to install that. <laughs> it's all kinds of like passwords and credentials popping up all over the place. I'm going to get totally get hacked one day, like it's going to happen. But now we have the device profile installed. That's great. Uh, as you can see in Replit, press any key. If you finished device registration, I will press any key. Um, and now we have a device. So I'll hit uh, space to select, return to submit. Um, and we're creating stuff. So you can see there's like a profile being created. The project is being compressed and uploaded to EAS. Um, there's a project fingerprinting step as well. And now the project is building. So we're getting there, folks. Uh, we're, we are getting there. The build has been queued. So you can actually go into your Expo dashboard and you should be able to see if you go to projects, the project we just created. So when I click into this, um, you'll see a build. Uh, and, and you can also go into the builds tab um, to see what's going on, uh, what is happening here. Basically, Expo is like spinning up a machine in the background that's going to take all of the uh, all of the files that we edited, everything we did in our app, um, and turn them into something that can go on our phone. This takes between 10 and 15 minutes, depending on the complexity of your application. If you build something really crazy, I have no idea how long this could take. So now we're creating a build. Um, Rather than sit here in awkward silence or for me to like try to explain stuff for 10 minutes, I'm just going to cut out and cut back in when this build is done and we'll pick it up from there. Okay, we're back and you can see here our build is complete. So it took about a minute and a half for it to start. We were in the queue, it took about eight and a half minutes for it to complete, about 10 minutes, all wrapped up, all said and done. Um, and it, you'll notice in your Expo app, what you should see is another QR code, right? First we had build queued and we were building some stuff. Now we have this QR code. Uh, to install our app on our device. Um, so what we did before, right, we installed that profile, we configured it on that end. Now what we're going to do is we're going to scan this QR code, and this is going to actually install our app. I'm going to hit install, and what you'll see in your like recent app section is that there's an app installing, which is exciting. Um, now, Matt, you're probably saying, you're probably saying, I'm, I'm really excited, I want to click this button, and you're going to click the button, and you're going to think your app's open, but it's not. Uh, <laughs> is it? Now, what you're probably going to do is say, oh, Matt, I'm really excited. I want to click this button. There's My app is on my phone. All I need to do now is open it. And you're going to click the button and you're going to be disappointed because there's one final step that we have to do. So exhale a sigh of relief. This is the last thing we need to do <laughs> before you can open your app on your phone. We need to enable developer mode. Uh, and the way to enable developer mode is to press OK on that dialog first. Go into settings. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. We're going to go to privacy and security. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom of privacy security. You're going to see developer mode and you're going to toggle it on. Now, when you turn developer mode on, you're going to have to restart your device. So this is the point where uh, I leave you and join you once my device is restarted. Um, you might see a few more rule warnings, a few more security precautions. These are all good things to read and understand. Um, but what we're doing does not compromise the security of your device in any way. Apple's just warning you because you're basically allowing yourself to install software on your phone. So if you're going to install stuff on your phone, you should probably be confident that you know what it's doing. Um, that's my disclaimer here. Uh, I'm going to hit restart and I'm going to join you after that process is complete. We are back. We have enabled developer mode. We have restarted our device. Um, we have the application installed. For dramatic effect, I've moved the application to my home screen and I have opened the random cat generator on Replit. And to show you that this is independent from what we're doing on Replit, I'm going to hit stop. So nothing is, is going on now. Basically, what we've done is Replit is a completely separate entity from our phone. There's nothing running on Replit that would be backing anything on our phone. 
we have a build on Expo that we've then taken and pushed onto our device using that QR code, using the profile that we installed earlier. And now, you know, for the grand finality, we have enabled developer mode and we can pick up our phone and we can tap the icon and we will get the random cat generator installed on our iPhone as an application. This is amazing. You can click show me another cat. It works. It's a real app. This does everything that the version on the web would do. We just went through the process of taking a development version, building that, pushing it to our iPhone and installing it on our iPhone. So now what we have is a preview of the application that is only usable by you, um, but it works. So this video, even though it's a little bit longer, um, even though it took a little bit of configuration, even though we had to pay Apple and do all the things, um, we went from zero to iOS app. And hopefully you were able to do this after a couple short videos. And the point I want to illustrate, this used to take days. It used to take weeks for even for people who knew what they're doing. So now the process I'm showing you ideally maybe takes an hour, maybe takes a morning, right? Like this isn't easy. Some of the stuff we're doing is complicated. I get it. I spent a lot of time trying to figure this out before we got it to work, but we have done it. This is outstanding. All you need is a Replit account. All you need is an Expo an account and an iPhone. And you can go from an idea that's in your head to an app that lives on your phone. And then with just a few more steps and Apple's approval, of course, you can go to an application that lives on the App Store that you can distribute to other people that you can share with your friends, with your family. Um, so I think, you know, the golden age of app democratization is upon us. We are uh, entering into an era where anyone can create personal software. Anyone can create personal applications that live on their iPhone. If you don't want to put an app on your iPhone, it's actually a, a whole lot simpler to create something that lives on a website and then to install that on the homepage of your phone. Uh, we'll have another video on how to do that soon. But again, I'm Matt with Replit. This has been part two of our Expo series is how you can take an Expo app and install it through the Apple App Store, through a development preview, through Expo to an application on your iPhone. But until next time, peace.